I came to Springhouse in 1996 and uh, haven't turned back since. Springhouse has been uh, just an incredible, incredible part of my journey and my walk, a strong foundation. It's been family. It's been home. Uh, and uh, I've, I, I continue to just uh, gravitate toward this place. Obviously, I'm in the position that I, I'm in right now. Uh, but even if I wasn't, this would still very much be home and be family. Uh, back in 2017, uh, just like uh, every healthy family, there was a period of time where there were, there were a few individuals in the church who uh, didn't really like how a few things were going uh, at the church. And, uh, you know, I was privy to some conversations with them and went to lunch with a couple of them. And, uh, and you know, being that I was so entrenched into, into loving this place and this being my family, you know, I went into protector mode and, and uh, wanted to see the things, the issues they were bringing to the table. I wanted to see those things solved because I really believe in this place. I think this place is incredible. And so uh, there was about a three to six month stint that year where I came in on Sunday mornings and instead of doing anything with regard to worship, celebrating the Lord, focusing on Him, I was focused on all the issues and the complaints and the things that they were bringing to me. And, and uh, I would come in and I'd be looking for the things that they said were wrong or that they would want to critique, all in hopes that I could solve the issues. I wanted them no longer to see those issues. I wanted those to be resolved because I, I care about this place. I care about, about this, this family. Um, well, about, about four to five months into that process, every week coming in in that mode, I, I went on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic. And uh, I remember landing in the Dominican Republic. I was with a group of teenagers and a teacher was with me. And I got off the plane and I had like a mini panic attack because I got off the plane with all these teenagers and I had no clue what we were supposed to do. I'm usually pretty organized, had all the details. But I had a little mini panic attack because I didn't know who was picking us up, what we were doing. And then I looked at the teacher that was with me and she, and she had everything organized and she had all the plans and all that stuff. And I remembered, oh yeah, I gave her the responsibility of planning this trip. And so my mini panic attack quickly moved to frustration to say, Lord, why am I even here? Why did I get on this plane? I, I, this is almost like a waste of time. And then it dawned on me. The Lord had something he wanted to speak to me specifically. And sure enough, two days later, the Lord really dealt with me and he convicted me and, uh, and, he, and, he, and he corrected me. And this is what the Lord said. He said, Kevin, the church was my idea, not yours. It was not man's idea. It was my idea. And if you see issues and things that people are bringing to you, then your commission is to go in that place and to love deeper and to serve more. And man, the Lord just convicted me and corrected me. And I'll tell you that following Sunday when I came into this place, I went down front. I can't tell you the songs that were sung. I really can't tell you the message that day, the offering communion, none of it. I was face down on the floor just weeping because for the first time in months, I came in focused on Him and Him alone. And the weightiness of His presence just draw, drew me to tears. And it was the most wonderful experience that I had had. We're reading out of Colossians today. First Coloss uh, I'm sorry, Colossians 1 uh, verse 18. And it says this, and he, he being Jesus, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have supremacy. I want to actually read the message version too. It says this, we look at the son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at the sun and see God's original purpose in everything created for everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank and angels and everything got started with him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes it and holds it together like a head does a body. Christ is the head of the church. And I don't know if maybe you've been in a position of being the recipient of criticism or critical feedback about, about the church. You do understand that the church is not the building. It, it is the people. Uh, but oftentimes we come in and we get so distracted by the stuff. You know, people are broken. People are hurt. People are cracked. People need the Lord. 
And when we come in to this place or when we gather together or when we view the church through a cracked lens, then we're going to look at things with a critical eye. But God commissions us. He he calls us. He draws us in so that when we come together as a church, we can acknowledge the head. Guys, Springhouse, not my church. It's his. Church at large, not my idea, not your idea. It's his idea. May we find the ability to press through all the distractions of human error and human brokenness and really honor the Lord as head of his church. Father, I thank you for the opportunity and privilege we have to gather together as a church and worship you. May you recalibrate our focus as we come into this place and and as people gather in houses of worship across the country, may you recalibrate our focus and put it centrally on you. We worship you. We want you to be the center. You are the head. And we are honored to be in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.